on public television in early September of 1968. It was a memorable event, appearing with Jack Kerouac on The Buckley Show, and hundreds of thousands have, in recent years, watched it on the internet. Jack was driven from Lowell, Massachusetts to New York City for the Buckley Show by his two brothers-in-law, who not, who not long thereafter drove Jack to Gloucester, Massachusetts to pay a visit to the great bard Charles Olson. Olson and Kerouac. In October 1968, there was a surprise visit from Jack Kerouac who showed up at 28 Fort Square in Gloucester in a black limousine from Lowe, driven by his brothers-in-law. Jack stood at the back steps of 28 Fort Square, shouting up to Olson's second floor apartment, Olson, the red carpet, please. Get out the red carpet. Not having any carpet, <laughs> Olson placed pages of the Sunday paper on each step leading down the stairs. <laughs> According to Olson's friend, Charles Bower, to whom Olson described Kerouac's visit, quote, Kerouac was pleased at the gesture, especially when he found, going up the stairs, that one of the pages he was walking on contained an article on him <laughs> in his picture. <laughs> then a year later, October 21st, 1969, Jack was watching the Galloping Gourmet television show in the morning, making notes in a pad and eating some tuna from a can when the blood from a burst vein bubbled in his throat and he passed from Earth. It was the second anniversary of the Bugs' exorcism of the Pentagon. That same day in October of 1969, Allen Ginsberg was just about to leave for a poetry tour, beginning with Yale, then a teach-in about Vietnam at Columbia University. He was at his farm in Cherry Valley, Gregory Corso had come for a visit. That evening, the phone rang. Gregory answered. It was the writer, Al Aronowitz. Gregory turned to Alan. Al, Jack died. Early the next morning, Ginsburg and Corso walked through the early snow to the woods up the hill and carved Jack's name into a tree. In his book, Charles Olson in Connecticut, Charles Boer writes about the time that Olson learned of the passing of Jack. Boer recalled that Olson was, quote, startled that he had died so young, unquote. Olson thought about going to the funeral, but couldn't determine whether he'd be buried in Massachusetts or Florida. He told Boer about Kerouac showing up at 28 Fort Square on a Sunday, shouting up to the second floor apartment, Olson, the red carpet, please, get out the red carpet. At which exhortation, Olson placed sun pages of the Sunday paper <laughs> on each step leading down the stairs, and one Kerouac stepped upon with an article about him and his photo, too. As for Olson, a few days later, he went into a hospital, soon to be diagnosed with his fatal liver cancer roiage. Mm -hmm. um, and the final poem that I'll read is, uh, um, I couldn't have done the thousands of glyphs uh, that exist in my archive and in archival boxes without uh, my loving partner of 60 years. <laughs> we met in Greek class at NYU. 
in 1958. I took Greek because my mother told me that a gentleman knows Greek and Latin. <clears throat> so I decided to, and that first day I met a gorgeous blonde woman. Still gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so a few years ago, um, it was before the tip, the tick nightmare, but a few years ago, Miriam, uh, on a summer night, she was in her loose peach gown. <clears throat> beneath the nearly full moon at midnight. She asked me to waltz barefoot on the lawn and do the polka, then lock hands and twirl till the summer stars were streaks. I owe her many things, among them a fresh lesson on the power of homo ludens. Homo ludens is a means partying human. <laughs> I owe her many things, among them a fresh lesson on the power of homo ludens. It's a Jungian phrase, but uh, so. <laughs> She was in her loose peach gown, neat the nearly full She asked me to waltz barefoot on the lawn and do the polka, then lock hands and twirl till the summer stars were streaks. I owe her many things, among them a fresh lesson on the power of homo ludens, homo ludens. Thank you.